gesturing leads to more involvement, attention, retention of information and likability. So if we can practice our gestures, we become better speakers. And there's this simple way of looking at it that from Chris Denham of the Zig Ziglar Corporation, there are general gestures. They, they're kind of nothing, meaningless gestures. A lot of people, if I just kind of stand up, will talk and sort of just move their hands basically like this. And it's better than just standing still and not gesturing at all, but it, it's not necessarily useful or, or more specifically meaningful or active. And it's just, if you, you could do it with me now, right? Just move your hand almost like you're juggling a small pattern right in front of you. <laughs> um, that's just these very general sort of simple basic gestures. And then we have more medi medium gestures. There's more energy. They're not what we call specific gestures, which I'll get into, but take your hands right now with me from here and bring them up. Be it, there's staccato gesturing, and this and that and this. There's more of a flowing gesture, rolling, shapes. There's this whole thing about drawing glyphs while you speak. What does that mean? It means just making some shapes. The whole idea is that if we make it a point to follow the pet trail, if you draw shapes, lines, trees, triangles, we become a little more active and engaged in our gestures. And then on the third level, what we call meaningful, specific gestures, a physical gesture and tonality that alludes to and refers to what you're talking about. I started here. And then through this process of ups and downs, I ended up over here. It took so much of me to make that first step onto the coals. But when I did it, I was jubilant. I couldn't contain my energy. Specific meaningful gestures are the pinnacle, the top of the gesture pyramid. When you make a point, when you have a list, when you allude to the bigness, the smallness, the slowness, the surprise. The specific meaningful gestures hit points in a deep way. And when you combine them with a pause, when you take that one meaningful point, blend it with inflection and a pause, oh, now you're communicating. When and how and where do I practice this? Because again, for I believe the fifth time, if you only practice your public speaking skills while public speaking, you won't get much practice. So next time you're talking with someone, just think more about gestures. If they know you really well, they might be like, oh, you're, you're a little, you're a little movie. You're, you got some spunk in you. What's going on? Um, practice and look for the opportunities with family, with friends, in small groups, on Zoom. Gesture more and be mindful of basic, simple, medium, intentional, and specific. And in its ideal state, the gesturing is a melody. You don't come out here with this big, strong, nothing but gestures the whole time without stopping. It's too distracting. Gesturing has a melody. It's slow, intentional. It's very specific. It's general. There's flow and there's intentional use of staccato gesturing. Surprise, right? And suddenly versus flowy gesturing. To sum it all up and put it in a bite-sized little wisdom nugget for you. Dial up your gestures talking with friends and family. A week in, you'll be a little bit better. A month in, you'll actually improve the impact of your communication. A year in, you will start to develop masterful use of gestures. The big tip is to practice gesturing more while in conversation with your friends. Try to get to specific, meaningful gestures at least once or twice in any given conversation, and soon it will become a part of you. Much like the juggler who doesn't think to themselves, throw this at 90 degrees and separate this and the angle and the catch, it just happens because we've practiced it over and over and over again. <laughs>